And welcome to the Rob Call Bottom Up Show, sponsored by opednews.com, available on Pacifica Radio Network, Progressive Radio Network, iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and more. My guest for this show is Dr. Margaret Paul. She's a psychologist, a best selling author, a relationship expert, and co creator of the powerful inner bonding self healing process. She's the author of Diet for Divine Connection and the Inner Bonding Workbook, among others. And she's successfully worked with thousands and taught classes and seminars for over 50 years. And if you want to find out about her work, go to innerbonding.com slash welcome for a free inner bonding course and join. Uh, so you, you started off our relationship. You wrote an article for opednews.com. And that article was, it's been downhill since Crisco. And mm -hmm. people who want to read it can go to bit.ly slash Crisco downhill to, to find it. Uh, and in the article, you, you talk about Crisco and how that was the start of a, 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 a downfall for, for our diet and for our health and a lot more. And you tie greed to poisoning of our food, our earth, and us. Right. So tell a little bit about what you said in that article. And, 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 and I'm particularly interested in the tie between greed because, yeah, greed is a big deal. It's, it's what is, produces so much bad in the world, but you get into it in a way that's really unique and different from other people. So briefly talk about the food and then let's get into why we're there. Yeah. So one of the things that I think most people don't realize is that um, at the turn of the century in the early 1900s is when Crisco came out and uh, it was a huge success. And so food companies started to produce what's called industrial seed oils, which is safflower, sunflower, cotton seed, soy, corn. They're very inexpensive to produce, but they are not natural. And what happens is that well, of course, they're in all the foods now. The, if, you, if you look at the rate of illness compared to these oils in the food, there's a direct relationship between how much of these oils have gotten into the food and how much illness there is on our planet. Because these foods create an enormous imbalance between omega-6 and omega-3, which is very, very important because if there's not a balance, then there's inflammation in the body. And the brain doesn't know the difference between the oils and natural fats, which people ate before that. And so it uses those oils because the brain needs fat, which is one of the reasons there's so much Parkinson's and Alzheimer's and all these other brain diseases, because this imbalance creates huge inflammation in the body. There's, there's supposed to be a one-to-one -one balance um, and you know, sometimes two to one omega-6 to omega-3. Now there's 20 to one because of the processed foods. You can't find a food, even organic processed foods, that don't have these oils in them. And so they've caused huge problems uh, for the health of our nation. Now, and of course, have, it you, is about greed because they make a lot been, of money. You've, you've been having a special diet. You, you, uh, you became woke when you were very young. Yes. And how long ago was that? That was 57 years ago. I was in my early 20s, and I read a number of books that really told me what was happening, and I believed it. And so I went off all processed foods, started to eat only organic foods at that time. And I'm so grateful now because um, now people my age, I'm going to be 80 this year, people my age are dying. They've got arthritis, they can't move, they can't do all the things that I can do, they have hips, you know, having to be replaced, knees having to be replaced. I don't have any of that. And of course, a lot of Alzheimer's. And, and what people who are listening on the radio show need to know is you look like you're, you're in your early 50s or late 40s. Yeah, you look amazing. Yeah, and so, uh, you know, at this point in my life, I can see how well it's worked for me and how badly it's worked for other people to not be eating. I mean, the, the rule of thumb that I have that I tell people is if people didn't eat it 200 years ago, don't eat it now. If you can't pronounce it, don't eat it now. If you don't know where it's coming from, don't eat it now. How do you do that? How do you do that? 
Well, I, I mean, I, I'm lucky. I live in a rural area. I go right to the farms for my, for most of my food. Um, I, I have a garden. I mean, a lot of people can do it if they want to, even inexpensively, even places like Costco have a lot of clean organic food. P- people spend a lot more than they realize on fast food, on junk food. If they really ate less and ate well, their health would improve enormously. And it's actually, it's causing a huge economic problem in our country. The, the health care is, uh, it's, it's over the top, the costs. So you talk specifically about bread and wheat. How do, what should people do there? Like, for example, I don't use those oils. In your book, you talk about the problem that most bread and wheat is unsprouted. Right. I, I go to the supermarket and I, there's, I have a choice of unsprouted, non-organic bread or, no, uh, sprouted, non-organic bread or, or unsprouted organic bread. What, what do you well, do then? <laughs> Uh, there, there are some sprouted organic breads. The problem is, is that most of them are made of sprouted wheat and wheat has been genetically modified, which also creates inflammation in the body. So it's, it's a big problem in our, in our food system. I mean, the food just isn't, isn't very clean and you have to be very, very careful. I make my own bread and that's how I've gotten around it. Uh, it's much less expensive and I know what's in it and I don't put any of those oils and I use sprouted flowers. And so, I mean, that's what I've done is I've gone back to what people did before refrigerators uh, and I ferment foods and, and I make my own. So, you know, people can do that. I'm very busy. I work very hard, but I still find the time to make the foods for myself that are very, very healthy. And you use a different kind of wheat. What kind of wheat do you use? I use a combination of rye and an, an ancient grain called einkorn. But einkorn. there are other ancient grains out there that people can get. Einkorn is fairly expensive, but I really like it. But for people who are on a budget, they can get um, grains that are much less expensive than einkorn, as long as it's not the traditional wheat, which has been genetically modified. Okay. So now the, the thing is, Eating this junk food, this processed food, you say affects how we think. Yes. Yeah. So, so what happens when we eat the junk food is that, you know, as many people know by now, because there's a lot of ads, is that our immune system is in our gut. Most of our immune system is in our gut. And, and we have bugs that live in there, and some of them are good and some of them are bad. And um, when we have more good bugs than bad bugs, we have health. But when the bad bugs overrun the good bugs, the gut flora, it's called the microbiome, um, then we get toxicity. Those, those bad bugs create toxicity in the body. And that toxicity creates holes in the gut, in the lining of the gut, goes out into the organs and creates illness. But it also goes up the vagus nerve into the brain and it creates toxicity in the brain. And that's one of the major causes of anxiety and depression. I mean, there's a huge rise in anxiety and depression, and that's one of the major reasons. And how is this related to people's relationships to others, to greed? Well, I mean, it's, it's about the food industry making a lot of money off food that's cheap to produce but is creating all kinds of health problems, even like the factory farms where they, you know, have all all the cows and the chickens where they're, they're inhumanely raised and treated. The cows are given grain, which is not natural to them. That changes the fat in the cows and, and brings up the omega three, uh, brings up the omega six, the omega three is down. Uh, And so all of this, all of this is causing huge health problems, and it is about greed. The factory farms are about greed. The processed food is about greed. They, they know it's harming us. And of course, the produce that's been sprayed with, you know, with Roundup uh, is causing huge, huge problems. And, and the GMOs are causing huge problems. They what know problems? That. What problems are, the, are Roundup and GMOs call, causing within us? 
Well, again, they destroy the good gut bacteria and the bad bacteria proliferate and it creates huge inflammation in the body. And that research is finding is one of the major reasons for illness, for, for chronic illness, for heart disease, cancer, diabetes, autoimmune disease, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, all of these illnesses, which were rare. It's like when I was growing up, kids didn't get cancer. They're getting it all the time now. So many people are dying of cancer. So many people have heart attacks, diabetes. This is the reason our food system is very contaminated. Now, you talk about the gut-brain-spirit connection, and your book is Diet for Divine Connection, so gut-brain-spirit connection. Pull, pull that together for me, please. Okay. So, again, when, when the gut is out of balance and it creates toxicity in the body, and then it goes up into the brain and causes a lot of problems in the brain. In order for us to have our natural divine connection, which indigenous people always had, we have to have what's called a high frequency because spirit, we can't see it. It, it vibrates at a higher frequency than we do, but we can raise the energy, our own frequency, um, in order to access that guidance, which is always here for each of us, always. But well, wait, 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 a little couple food. definitions here. A couple definitions. The guidance okay. is always here. What guidance? Per, uh, say that again. I didn't hear you. You just said the guidance is always here. What guidance? Okay. Uh, guidance is whatever it is for somebody, whether it's God or just a, a light or spirit. Our, our universe is filled with intelligence. Whatever you want to call that intelligence, I just call it guidance. Um, I can, I can open to it. I can receive information from it. I do all my work by accessing it. And, and you talk about at will connection. I think this is part of this. Yes, we, we can access this anytime we want provided two things. One is that we're eating well. So the frequency of our body, our energy is high enough. And two we're open to learning. In, in the inner bonding process that I teach, there's only two intentions. One is to control um, other people, to control outcomes, to control our feelings, to avoid pain. The other is to learn about what's loving to us and loving to others. When we open to learning, again, our, our frequency goes up. And so when we're both open to learning and we're eating well, we have at will divine connection. Took me a long time to put that together because I, I really wanted to have that. I tried for a long time. And when inner bonding spirit brought in inner bonding about 35 years ago, and I started to have that connection. And I thought, oh, wow, I'm going to teach this to my clients and they would have it. But they didn't. And it, I finally realized they didn't because they weren't eating cleanly like I was. It, it took these two things. It took eating cleanly and being open to learning in order to have that natural connection. Kids come in with it. They have it. And then they lose it because of, of their upbringing, what they eat, and all of that. Okay, so I need to do a brief show ID uh, for the radio show. I'm going to add a bumper, but here I'm just going to pause so that I know where to put in the bumper, okay? Okay. And my guest for this show is Dr. Margaret Paul. She's a psychologist, a best-selling author, a relationship expert, and the author of Diet for Divine Connection and the Inner Bonding Workbook. And her website is innerbonding.com. Now, I, I've got a book coming out uh, very soon, and uh, it's the, it's the bottom-up revolution, uh, Mastering the Emerging World of Connectivity. And uh, in it, the one main message that I want to give people is that they need to develop connection consciousness. Yes. Which I really think is what you're talking about, too. It's freeing yourself up with your health and your consciousness and your emotions so that you can stay connected at a higher level, at a higher vi vibration with the powers that be, with, with, with the universe. Well, that, that's so true, Rob. And, and it's not just connection with ourselves and with the universe, but it's connection with each other. 
Absolutely. Well, you know, and everybody when, and yeah. everything. Yeah. When, when we connect with the universe, um, when we really open to learning, what we get is that we are actually all one. And, and that sense of oneness is so important for people because the, the, the ego part of us um, likes to see us as separate. And that's where all the competitiveness is and all the greed is, all the one up, one down is, all the harm that people do is seeing us as separate. If we were to understand that we were one, that would change. When I meditate, my meditation is remembering that the boundaries are artificial and remembering that we're all connected to each other. That's and right. I go through a mantra, I, you, we, all, one. Because that's, that's right. where I want to be. So well, that's right. And, and if there. people really knew that, you know, th they wouldn't be hurting each other because they would realize that hurting anybody hurts themselves. But I want to get into one thing. You're talking about a vibration and you're talking about connecting with uh, the divine. That sounds can sound a little woo woo. <laughs> well, and, and that's sad because address that address. It. It's sad because it's the most natural thing in the world. Um, we were not dropped here alone and separate. We are always being helped and guided. And when people open to that, there's so much relief. You know, the, the, uh, so much depression and despair is because of this sense of separateness and not having that comfort and that guidance to turn to. Life changed so much for me, so, so much. I, I can't even begin to describe um, the joy that I finally started to feel in my life when I attained that at will divine connection. It just makes all the difference in the world. So what do you say to an atheist who says you're full of it? No, say that again? What do you say to an atheist who says you're full of it? Okay, well, I've, I've worked with atheists, and, and, um, and I've worked with people who say, look, I don't believe in anything, and part of my process is asking a question, um, what is most loving to me? What is in my highest good? So I've asked atheists to just ask the air, just ask the air, what is loving to me? What is loving to others? What is in my highest good? And invariably, answers start to come in, and... I, I don't care where they think the answers are coming from, but they, they do get answers. And whether they change their mind about that, I don't know. But as long as they're asking what is loving, what is in my highest good, and what is in the highest good of all, I don't care what they believe about where the answers are coming from. And, you know, I, I mentioned to you before we went on the air that uh, I have a website that I started probably 20 years ago called talkingtogod.com. And I had a really weird experience. I, I, was working on a novel where there was a character in heaven talking to God. And we know that when novelists and fiction writers and screenwriters are developing characters and dialogue, sometimes the, the conversations take on a life of their own. And that happened to me. And so here I am with a character talking to God and God is talking back. And I, so I started transcribing some of it. I put it into this website, which has not been touched in, in at least 20 years. So it's really old technology, but it was a, it was a real epiphany for me. And I had to ask myself is, well, are, are you making up the answers or is this some divine connection? And my, I decided I didn't care. Yeah. It, it was useful and, and, and helpful to do it. And I think that's, that's what we're talking about, right? That's exactly what we're talking about, Rob. And, you know, my, my latest book, which just came out in March, which you mentioned, the Inner Body Workbook, uh, when the publisher uh, um, asked me to do it, they said, can you have it ready by, um, by August or September? And I said, no, no, I'll have it ready by May. And it took me six weekends because I sat down and I just opened. And it was like taking dictation. That, that information is there, and when we open to it, it comes through, and it's so much fun. It was so much fun for me to write that book, just so, like so, what you're talking about. But, but, but you know, I, I, I used to run a conference, StoryCon, and one of the novelists said the first step in writing is to just dump, just vomit out everything, and then you got to edit. So how much editing was there after that? I had almost no editing. It just really? came right through. I had almost no editing. I sent it off to the publisher. They did a little bit of editing, and that was it. That's great. That's great. Yeah. So what did, what did 
So let's get back to greed. You, in your book and in, in your interviews, you, just, you explain how people get so greedy that they screw up the world and poison the planet. You know, how? How does that happen? Well, you know, it, that ties in so much to what we're talking about because people are looking outside of themselves to fill up. They're looking to money. They're looking to things, to, to, to power. And, Why? And think, pardon? Why are they doing that? Because they, they don't know how to connect to their source of love. You see, if people knew how to connect to their divine guidance and bring that love in, that, that's what fills Love is what fills. Whenever people work with me and they feel empty inside, and I work with a lot of very wealthy people who feel very unhappy and very empty because they keep, you know, they've got the house and the relationship and the kids and the yacht and the cars, and they're still empty because they've never learned to open to the source of love. Love is what fills us up, not things. Uh, but, but people, if they don't know how to do that, then they want more and more things, and that that generates the greed. It's interesting because uh, you know, in in my book, in the Bottom Up Revolution, I I talk about how we've got a huge problem with disconnection, and people need to connect. And uh, I I focus mainly on people connecting to each other. I think that there's a huge dearth of that as well. I think that people who who are connecting to a thousand friends on Facebook, they're, they're uh, deluding themselves. And uh, I, I had a conversation with Howard Gardner, the, uh, the founder of the idea of multiple intelligences. And he said that it used to be that people would identify three really close friends. And now it's down to two. That's a huge drop. Yeah, and, uh, but one of the major problems is, is that because people don't know how to bring love in themselves, even when they're trying to connect with others, and this is one of the major problems in relationships, is people want a relationship in order to get love rather than share love. We don't have love to share until we learn to love ourselves. And that's what I write about, um, um, the inner bonding process about learning to love yourself. It's a, it's a six-step pathway for how to really learn to love yourself, how to fill yourself up with love so that you have love to share. And when two people are taking responsibility for their own feelings, learning to love themselves, then they have love to share. And that's, that's the most wonderful experience in life. What are the six but steps? Trying to get love, that's what doesn't work. What are the six steps? Okay, so the first step, I'll do it very, very briefly here, um, is learning to be present in your body with your feelings. All the addictions that people use are to avoid responsibility for their feelings. So this is, okay, I'm willing to feel my feelings in order to learn what they're telling me. Step two is moving into the intention to learn instead of trying to control and inviting in the love and compassion of spirit. Step three is we dialogue with how are we treating ourselves? How are, we, how are we judging ourselves? People judge themselves. They're not good enough. They'll never be good enough. There's something wrong with them. I mean, that creates so much pain, so much anxiety and depression. So we're going in to see how are we treating ourselves? What are we telling ourselves? And what are the false beliefs behind that? And step four is we're opening to our higher wisdom for the truth and what would be loving to ourselves. Step five is then we take the loving action whatever would be loving without the action, nothing changes. And step six is we go back in and see how we feel. And if we feel relief, we know we've taken an action that is indeed loving to ourselves. And so that's the outline, but in, in both these new books, Diet for Divine Connection and the Irvani Workbook, people can learn this process. Anybody can learn it. And it's so life-changing. That sounds like a good plan. It really does. So, so you talk about self-criticism and, and, and how that changes the way people relate to other people. Uh, that kind of struck me. Talk a little bit about that. Okay, well, you know, like, let's say you have a child and you're constantly criticizing the child and, and, and the child's going to a party and you say to the child, look, you better say the right thing and you better act this way, you better act that way. The child's going to be up, uptight and terrified about saying the wrong thing. And this is what happens on the inner level. We're constantly telling ourselves, you know, you gotta be perfect, you gotta perform, you gotta say it right, don't make a mistake, don't fall on your face, don't make a fool out of yourself. 
Well, that makes us feel very anxious. It's, it, we don't relate well when we're coming from anxiety. We relate well when we're being ourselves, when we're seeing who we really are, which is a spark of the divine. And we value who we are and we share that with each other. That's what creates connection. And social media sure screws that up too. Pardon me? Social media like Facebook and everybody showing oh. their best. Oh, I know. Certainly screws, screws Really up. messes it up. We've got a wrap. Anything you want to finish up with? Well, I just want to encourage people. We have a, a tremendous amount of free information on innerbonding.com. So I want to encourage you to go there and take advantage of all that we offer um, and in many languages. So um, please take advantage of that. And my guest for the show has been Dr. Margaret Paul. She's the author of Diet for Divine Connection and the Inner Bonding Workbook. Her website is innerbonding.com. You have a couple of workshops coming up in the next couple of weeks. You want to talk about them? Yes, I have one at the Art of Living Center in North Carolina where I'll be teaching inner bonding in a weekend workshop. And I have an online course that's coming up a week from Wednesday um, called Love Yourself. And it's a 30-day course where people learn to love themselves. Great. Thanks so much for being on the show. Thank you so much, Rob.